Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I am back with a format that is near and dear to the hearts of myself and Michael Sidgwick who pens these lovely critiques as it is time once again to draw out the fingers and wag them in the face of the WWE and accuse them of being big old fibbers. As according to them, this year, this year of 2019, this year of 2019 in wrestling and the WWE, they said that it's been the best ever year that they've had. And we're here to ask the question, was it bollocks? Question mark. Well, to begin answering this rather complex question, let me pose another one. Will any top WWE superstar promoted by the company exit 2019 in a better position than they entered it? So Brock Lesnar's the first example, and he entered 2019 as an, in theory, mega drawing card with little influence over declining ratings, who was only conditionally brilliant, but his exit? Well, nothing changed. Becky Lynch, well, she entered 2019 as the hottest act in the industry, and after a mixed year, she will exit 2019 as a star only capable of siphoning off a fraction of WWE's core demo to NXT. She can siphon, retain maybe, but not grow viewership. Seth Rollins turned himself heel through excusing his dire booking and incredibly putting it over as something not just amazing, but superior. Braun Strowman, is arguably directionless. Kevin Owens has momentum, but that was true in the summer. AJ Styles is the same upper mid-card presence that he was 365 days ago. Ditto Randy Orton, and neither man has helped anyone new onto the scene and stay there. Then we have Roman Reigns, who seemed incapable of being anything other than white hot after his return, and he got the newfound respect gained from the WWE Universe, but now, well, the big dog has been made to look like a pedigree chump, and it just looks like he's being locked into a dire storyline with King Corbin for what feels like a millennia. All topped off with more terrible dog puns force-fed to you like rotten dog meat. Now, don't get me wrong, though. Some stars have improved their TV stock a bit, like Mustafa Ali and Chad Gable, only in so far that now more people are aware of their sheer in-ring skills, but Chad is a perfect example of the company giving with one hand and taking the f***ing piss with the other. Shorty G is one of the worst creative booking decisions of recent memory. But it's not the only mess that the WWE has made, because we have had and deep breath now. Wild card rules, Miz TV segments that feel dated, apologies to the management, 50-50 booking, dog segments, overly scripted promos on talent being ugly, cuckold storylines which are just Vince's desires to show his wife that he wants out, countless unexplained alliances and sudden unexplained heel turns. <sighs> it's been a lot of sh but you know what, let's just pick up on those last points because Asuka and Kairi Zayn, they actually qualify under both unexplained alliance and an unexplained heel turn. Now using Asuka as a specific example of the chronic WWE problem, we can see that she started the year by defeating Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble. Very good. This all seemed to build towards Becky's post-WrestleMania program, but it didn't happen. She then formed a tag team with Kairi Zayn via Japanese pollen credit OSW good boys they are. And then she seemed to forget that she had two strong claims on the championships, two championships, and then she disappeared off the face of the earth. It's strange because while she is great as a heel and the WWE are seemingly keen to push it, how is it possible to invest in her in this form when all of her actions prior to this are of a conquering badass? It doesn't feel natural. And the only thing that's saving this gimmick is that it's well, quite honestly, impossible to boo her because of how, ta how talented she is. And it's this scripting that has been the major issue for the WWE this year. I mean, look at The Fiend. A hell in a cell, Vince McMahon bathed The Fiend in red light that obscured the match entirely. Then he told us a story that was so convoluted and so utterly bollocks that the crowd demanded a restart, and then it ballsed up the very rules of wrestling by having their next encounter have to carry the terms, this won't stop under any circumstances. And you know what Vince did? You know what he did when he heard the crowd ripping this to shreds? Well, according to Sean Ross Sapp, he simply laughed it off. Not that we should be surprised, as Vince has been bantering off his own talent for months now. I mean, just look at this bloody roster. So many of the wrestlers on his shows are just there. One week, we're instructed to care about them. 
And then next, a few weeks later, it becomes impossible to do that because they're not on TV or they're jobbing to the new flavor of the week. Voices of Wrestling put it perfectly when they summed up this phenomena as jag booking. These are just a guys. They're just a guys. But the question is, how does this happen? Well, it happens the same for every single person. The new act is introduced or reintroduced to TV via a match or backstage vignette, and then they're just plopped into a storyline without any chance to cut any meaningful promos. Instead, we have the commentary team who slaps a nickname over whoever it is and then uses the line, I spoke to such and such earlier in the night, in the hopes that this will lead the thousands and thousands in attendance to go home and rewatch the match to understand why the hell they should bloody care. And because of this branding, because of the repetition of nicknames, they become like everyone else. Very few talents have unique wrestling styles, and if they do, after a few months, the corners will just be smoothed away and they'll just become another pebble propping up the leaning tower of pish that Vince has built. A good example is Ricochet. They tell us that he's a real life hero, but it never shows us why. I mean, what differentiates Ricochet from fellow super athlete Cedric Alexander? A nickname? How does Ricochet train? How hard does he go to the gym to develop these skills? They are skills to admire, and yet the WWE doesn't care to show its workings, it's just presenting what it thinks is the answer. If anything. By doing this, they are selling him and other talent short. In fact, the WWE, in their attempts to make a superhero, have just irradiated him by denying Ricochet a genuine backstory. Humberto Carrillo and Cedric Alexander are the most recent case studies in this failure. It never felt like they took AJ to his absolute limit because... In short, they didn't. I mean, the medium TV gear that these formulaic matches are wrestled in, it just undermines the story. And if these matches just bleed into one another, if the near fall is just completely overused, how can the emerging babyface inspire any hope? It's just rinse and repeat cookie cutter bullshit. And trust me, these mini stories are repeated a lot, mainly because the WWE is lazy and just rarely follows through with any patience, which in turn breeds tedium and cynicism. However, joking aside, that does mean that there's no character development. It's non-existent. I mean, don't you think that we should have more story in our stories? Tell us how X got here, how hard they fought, and what they stand to gain or lose. Because at the moment, everyone who comes into this company is pushed like thunder for a week, and the audience has just got no idea why. And then when they fail to get over, because the audience has got no idea why, they are immediately relegated to the mid-card. It's actually a staggered approach that's actually made worse by NXT's idea that only the champion graduates. I mean, here, holding the belt gives the people the idea that you're a champion, and so when you're not instantly won on the main shows, the WWE treats that as a failure and you end up being part of the furniture. And so, when the push doesn't get over, because the push isn't given enough time to get over, the push stops. Cedric is going nowhere on Raw. Buddy Murphy benefited from a, a mini push on SmackDown in the summer, and then that simply ended. The conditions to get over with the company are ineffective and ultimately, almost invariably, pointless. And so to answer the question I posed before, has anyone come out of the other side looking stronger than going into 2019? Not at all, because that's the WWE machine working its magic. And the kicker here is that the fans have come to distrust this routine because it is so blatantly ineffective. There is no excitement nor anticipation surrounding the big breakthrough because, get this, nobody breaks through. And if they do break through, it is not by design, but via happenstance. I mean, look at Becky and Kofi. They got themselves over. The WWE had no hand in this. Literally every complaint at the WWE is aimed at or can be traced back to Vince McMahon. The company's creative is institutionally broken. So if the WWE was being honest about 2019, the realization would strike with the deadening repetition of a jackhammer. As long as Vince's DNA runs through this company, it is genetically broken. Have a Merry Christmas. And there we go, my friends. That was If the WWE is Being Honest about 2019. I hope that you enjoyed that. And please let me know down below what you thought about these ramblings that Sidgwick and I have put together. 
And I did mean that as well, in, even though I said it in a kind of sar sarcastic and cynical way. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. This is the last face to cam that I'll be filming before I too go off on my Xmas holidays for the year. So it's my only real time to say to you at home that I hope you have a fantastic Christmas and that I hope that you are well. I know at this point in time, as the lead up to Christmas bleeds into the cold and rather depressing months of January and the new year is daunting ahead of us, it can seem like sometimes things can get a bit too much, but I want to say to you, my friend, that you deserve love, happiness and success. Give that gift to yourself and remember, if things are getting on top of you, you can take a step back. It is okay to take a break. Use that to get some stock and some perspective and trust me, you might find things are a lot, lot easier. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And if you want to do something completely different, give yourself the gift of trying a new channel, as it were, I've got a board game channel called Live and Let's Dice. So if you want to go check it out, that would mean the absolute world to me. Have a great time because remember, you are awesome. Never forget that. And I'll catch you later. Bye.